Alright guys, first off, sorry if I sound echoey. I'm in an empty room because I have to prepare for mold remediation and everything is packed away until the anti-mold paint goes on on Saturday. So please bear with me. PNSO has been silent forever, but now it's come back. And what a return. Sauropods are my favourite dinosaur group and already we've seen a bounty last year. This year promises well. And from PNSO comes this Lufensaurus, an early basal sauropodomorph, a gift for sauropod fans like me. Lufensaurus means lizard from Lufeng, a city in Yunnan. Incidentally, that's where a girlfriend of mine is going, but since she has zero interest in dinosaurs, she won't be enjoying the Lufeng Dinosaur Museum. Now, Lufensaurus is not entirely new. PNSO has in fact released one before, this guy here. I always like it when PNSO reboots all the dinosaurs while honouring the original colours. And what colour? According to the Molina Perez and Lara Mendy sauropod book, Lufensaurus had a true central estimate of 8.9 metres or 29 feet. I estimate the true central length in this model to be 29 centimeters or 11.4 inches, so the scale is roughly 1 to 30.6 or 1 to 31. And here's the 1 to 30 Wonder Artistic Models humanoid next to it. And here's the 1 to 35. And you can see how it really is a bit too big for that scale. The most striking thing is, of course, the beautiful zones of colours. You have that green, a reddish brown accenting the dorsal midline, a pale underside separated by a beautifully blended border that limits the stripes. They even have a rather familiar looking accent in the tail. And given the lifelike and bipedal posture, it's amazing it can stand independently. Unfortunately, PNSOs are notorious for warping over time, so this feat of design is wasted. You'll have to use these stands, which I find very fiddly. They aren't always reliable, depending on application angle and surface slope. It would have been so nice if the legs were made of a resilient material. But otherwise, you can see the pose and the colours make any viewing angle very pleasing indeed. And again from the top, just look at that nice accent. So a bit closer now. The head is really small. The eyes are painted rather simply, but at least very carefully and the reddish sclera is pretty unusual. The teeth are also cleanly painted, though very basically. And from some angles, as you'll see, the skin looks rather smooth. But nonetheless, nicely sculpted detail can be seen, some even at a very fine level. And again, I'm a broken record here. Just look at the colours and the detail. We can look at the neck here, with some feature scales scattered throughout. And down the shoulder, the torso, and here down the midline, almost a kind of ridge. but with a paraspinal muscle bulk nicely fleshed out. Again, just look at those beautiful fades of colour. The detail in the hind limbs
especially the tarsal. And then the foot area are always sculpted with meticulous detail. Pianesso really pays attention to the feet. You can make out the textures and the three-dimensionality in that relief. I really like how they fade to black towards the ground. You can also see the brown nails here. You can't help but be impressed with how realistic those feet look. Perfect rendition of both harder scaly areas with the softer tissue such as the foot pads. Then we have the upper limbs. Down here, the unusual form of the hand with the thumb grasping fingers, and the two lateralmost vestigial fingers. Down the tail, what a wonderful blend of colours again. And that very familiar accent, a la Haolonggu. And finally, the underside. Surprisingly enough, while some other areas look smoothed out, the belly, an area we'd never see in usual viewing, is ironically outstanding in exquisite detail. Now, I'm not one to comment on cloacas, but Whoa, well, just look at that very anatomically real detail. Alright, some comparisons. Unfortunately, this is the only primitive sauropod I have. The Carnegie Museum collection Plethiosaurus, though I'm hoping that one of the big two will produce an updated version of this. We can also see some other PNSO sauropods. We have the disappointingly sized and monotonously painted Marmon Seasaurus. Then we have the wonderfully formed Alamosaurus. This still has the most pleasing neck proportions I've seen in any Titanosaur model. And moving to the big guys, here's the Haolongku Apatosaurus. and the Rebor Diplodocus. And then the biggest boys, the W Dragon Giraffe Titan, the Nanmu Watchman Brachiosaurus, And then the Haolongku Elamosaurus. And finally, our standard comparators the PNSO Wilson T Rex, then the Cameron T Rex. So there we have it, the PNSO Lufengsaurus. What a wonderful way to break the drought from PNSO. And it really shows that PNSO still has it when it comes to beautiful paint application. I really fervently hope that this heralds the dawn of a new paint application. But really, until we see the next offering, we won't know. Sometimes it's almost like PNSO means to troll us or to spite us.
If you look at Zhang Chuan, Lao Shi's artwork, you know he has more than just dark stripes on brown, and hopefully we'll see more of that actualized. I'm really looking forward to more sauropods this year. Maybe even another basal sauropodomorph. I really want an updated Plateosaurus. What about you? Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.